Welcome back to Just Painted. All right, so today we're gonna to start part two of of this kit. My kit released um, the Swan from the Warriors, and um, today is the we're gonna start painting. You know, this kit was all done um, as far as priming, prepping, and the priming video that we did before. Um, so today I would like to start painting him. And we're going to start with some base colors, or color, uh, okay, because um, uh, what I'm planning to do is uh, doing a little research and stuff like that. Uh, the pants are, dark, are very dark brown. We've got a, a brown belt. Uh, I want to put a base layer for him, which is going to be brown, the jacket, okay. And then maybe if I have any paint left over from whatever we're doing, I'll put some paint on the hair. Uh, I usually like to do that last, but... We can do it first. It's no big deal. All right, but this kit has been prepped and primed. Watch my last video on how to prep the kit and everything, and he is all ready to go as far as that goes. All the seams have been done. Uh, all the work has been finished as far as um, uh, seam lines and everything like that. So, And um, I think it came out great with the primer. All right, we got the details in the hand that we saved from doing the hole right there, if you can see that. Nice little detail still there. Let me get a little closer if I can. There we go. All right, so, um, you know, we did some work to prep the kit to get it to this point. All right, and I showed a step-by-step -step video on how I did that. And hopefully you guys can use that as a resource. All right, and then, uh, you know, now, now we did the priming. Uh, we did a little bit of patchwork afterwards, and then we reprimed. Okay, so all that stuff is in the previous video. So, today we're just going to start painting. And again, like I said, brown is going to be the main part right now in this part. His shoes are black. Alright, and this, I'm going to... I know that these shoes are not probably the same one that he was wearing. Um, trying to get some research on what kind of shoes he wore at that time they were boxer shoes that I know and you know to try to get a good you know so we decided to go with these and this is uh, there was a brand out there that they were very popular at the time uh, not very expensive sneakers uh, they were not Converse or anything like that but I don't remember the name of the brand but I'll try to remember I'll try to put it here um, and you know I went with those shoes instead so all right again this is a fan art so okay uh, so I wanted it just to you know make a note on that so we're gonna start to paint let me get the stuff that I need uh, I want to probably use either one of these two colors right here the black brown from acro but I don't have a I don't know how much I got left on this one so I think I'm gonna have to go with the um, um, Vallejo black uh, German black brown. I use this all the time. You guys see me in the channel. I use either one of these. I do love Pro Acro, but like I said, I don't think I have enough to do the kit. There's not a whole lot of paint left in here, so I'm gonna just gonna go with this one, which is a new bottle. So, okay. So uh, we'll see. All right. So let me get things set up and ready to go, and uh, I'll come back and we'll get started. All right. All right. So we're back. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as usual, I put my kits on uh, either uh, one of these alligator crip, uh, clips or stuff to hold them. But right now, I got them on a chopstick. Okay, just you know, I chop, I cut the chop the stick down so it could fit in one of the holes underneath. Okay, and it's easier to turn as you paint. Okay, just a little tip. Okay, he's just secure there. He's not glued on or anything like that. I just twisted him on, and it seems to be on there pretty good. All right, and then I put him on a 
This is one of those flower arrangement things. You know, I buy these and I stick them on these, okay, to hold them up. Just a little tip there, okay, and uh, I need to get a new one <laughs> because this one's getting all beat up. But, um, <clears throat> again, um, you know, they're on a, like a little skewer or whatever you can get, that you can, you know, that you can use to um, hold on to your kit while you paint, okay? All right, so, like I said, I'm going to use the Vallejo, German Black Brown. Okay, another thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be continually testing the Galeri um, Mobius, Mobius 0.2. Okay, and you saw my, uh, it wasn't really a review, it was just a little show and tell, because I just I just got these um, these airbrushes, I actually got two of the 0 0.2 and a 0 0.3 all right so um all right there it is right there so far i think it's a great edge brush but let's give it a little bit more test because i want to see how it really works in doing all this stuff i just did a base so i want to see how it does on a figure all right so i'll be doing a little bit more tests on that and i'll give you a little update maybe later on or as i paint and you know you guys can it's a great airbrush so far all right but let's give it more of a of a test on that. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to put a little bit of black brown into my cup. Uh, let me get my mixer brush. Uh, remember, I use gnarly old brushes for this. All right, so I got one right here. And let's start. I've been wanting to start this for a while now. I'm going to put a little bit of flow improver, one to two drops in there. I don't put a lot. And a little bit of thinner to get us started. If you guys watch my videos, I like my paint to consistency of milk. I check on the side of the cup to see how it flows. Okay, let's start off with a little bit here. Right. Okay. So, light layers, guys. You know, start. Don't cake the paint on there. I repeat this all the time. Just do light layers, let it dry, and then come back again and do you know a little bit more coverage if you need it. But don't go caking paint on there. Okay. All right. So let's start. A little schmucks of there. All right. When you start off, you can do a circular motion, make sure you get good coverage everywhere. I'm still trying to figure out the, the trigger on this, uh, you know, where the sweet spot is. So I'm still trying to learn that because every airbrush is different. You know, some have uh, where the pull is right away, or you know, it takes a little bit for some. This one has good, pretty good reaction, but still, I need to learn how to control it better. Get that trigger memory with this airbrush. You know. that dry
once it's dry, we'll go back to it and see if we need to do anything else to it. All right, so let's continue with the brown. Put a little bit of that. Shake it up again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the tip off a little bit. Quick, but let me mix the paint, get it ready. Should have done that first, but well, it is what it is. Okay. All right. All right, so I'll take the cover off. Okay. I'll get a little bit of get a little bit of airbrush cleaner in a little cup. The Q tip. I'll just wipe the tip off a little bit. Don't put a lot of pressure, just wipe it off. Okay, make sure that tip is clean. Put your protective cap back on. Okay, now this this needle might not be the best one to do for what I'm doing right now with just putting base coat on there. You can probably go with a little bit a bigger one. But I just want I'm doing it for more for testing than anything. So So here's the jacket. One thing that I need to do is get inside the jacket. Okay. And parts down here and a little bit on the edging right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do that with the brush in here and here. But here I can get it probably with an airbrush, but let's check it out. All right. You want to make sure you get that dark color in there. Get it inside the pockets. Okay. Get it all over. Don't worry about that stuff. We're going to do all that by hand. I'm also going to have to do inside the sleeves. and touch up some of the edging. All right, we'll do that with a brush. That's pretty good. I like, I mean, once you get it down, I mean, geez, you can get really close. I mean, I wouldn't do this without, if I had skin tone on there already, I would probably mask it, but you can get really, really close with this stuff. I really like the trigger, huh? I wish, like I said before, I wish I had a little bit of a taller trigger, but you know, so far so good, not too bad. the rest with the brush. It's not too bad. Just get that little base color going. Nice. 
Blend that back in. I screw up. A little color on his hair. I'm running out of paint. Okay, I'm going to let him dry. That looks pretty good. It's drying up. It's going to finish drying before I do any uh, salt. <clears throat> when this finishes drying, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, the Mac clear on it, all right, to protect it, so we can continue to paint. But I had to let the stuff dry real quick. So, but in the meantime, in the meantime, put a little bit of that in there. All right. Let me clean my brush, and I'll be right back. A little brush work. I'm gonna put a little bit of a brown in here. Put a little water in here. It's all dry, so. Not too bad, but. Needs a little bit of brush work. Now, I was thinking maybe I should have done the skin tone first before I did the, um, the what do you call it, the, um, the jacket, but uh, we'll see how that work pans out. You know what I'm saying? So just pay attention. Uh, you might want to reverse it. But there is some crevices in here that you need to get to. All right, like inside the jacket right there. You see that? Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some brown in there. And then what I'm thinking is with the skin tone, I'll try to get this, I'll mask this out, the edges and stuff. Uh, we'll see how that works out. I might have to retouch up some of the brown later on, and that's okay. You know, going back and forth until you get the, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to need a little bigger, bigger brush. Okay. So we're just putting a base color, guys. We, it's not going to be like, you know, all right? So let me let this dry. I don't want to keep on touching it because I'm, I'm rubbing some paint off here. I want too much touch up on this. I just want to. Okay. So there we go. Right, so I'm going to let them dry. Alright, we got some paint to color. Oh, got a little corner here. Inside these deep crevices and stuff, which I wanted. Airbrush. Just feather it in. Okay. Alright, cool. Don't worry about the overspray. We're gonna take care of that. You know, it looks ugly right now, but it'll be fixed. I'm not gonna put more color in the, on the hair because I am gonna go in there with the skin tone. Okay, so. Let's leave it like that. Let's 
and then we'll do a little we'll seal it and then we'll start working on the uh, oops. Yeah. and then we'll start working on the uh, on the skin tone all right all right so we're going to dry and seal it be back a little bit all right so let's start working on the flesh first start off with tan flesh all right pro acro a little thinner in my cup a couple of drops of flow improver I'm not going to do any masking yet. I might get some overspray. That's okay. I'm trying to debate. <clears throat> I'm trying to debate if I should have done the flesh first or the. I think. I think I did it the right way, to be honest with you. Again, these are just base colors, so I can always go in and touch them up. Once we start getting into like the more detailed stuff. Then you're gonna need to mask things off. All right, but go back and forth to touch up. I'll try to keep the paint within the boundaries, if possible. All right. Nice and thin layers. We'll, we'll go back and forth. Um, um, you know, we'll just start off with a, once with a little bit of paint, and then we'll go back and put some more on. But Thin layers, guys. Alright. We'll go nice and gently. Those spots that are down there, I'll get in there with the brush. Alright. Trying to get a look, uh, uh, a, a little take on what it's going to look like, okay? Put the brown in there and everything and the skin tone. Starting to. Still got a lot way to go, so. But make sure I get cut coverage everywhere. Touch up the rest of it with the brush. I get in there a little bit, <clears throat> and a couple of the spots here and there, like behind the neck and stuff, that I want to go with a brush. The ears, all right, and um, just want to make sure they're going between these fingers. It's a little loose right now. I got to tighten this up. Yeah, I don't want to spin them too much because he's got a little loose on the stick, <laughs> so I don't want to drop them. But. Um, There he is, guys. All right. All right. Yeah, a little bit up on that upper hair right there. We're gonna split right there. I want some skin to show there. Mm -hmm. There it is, right there, guys. What do you think? Okay, so that's the base layer right there. Okay, so I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna spray it, seal it. Okay. Very happy the way this is going. Alright, so there he is right there guys. Okay. Fingers look good. Got enough color anywhere. Alright, so that's the base tone right there. So I 
I said to you before, don't worry too much about the jacket. Let's concentrate on the, on the skin right now. And then we'll do the paint over on these oversprays. No problem. Okay. Okay, but right now let's let him dry. We'll seal him. When we come back, we'll start off doing some uh, detail work and stuff. Okay. So hang in there and be back in a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to do a little tinting. Okay, so we're going to do that on the skin tone. So it's all sealed. <laughs> this one's a little cleaner. All right, so we're gonna start doing a little tinting um, and freckling a little bit. So anybody who's new in my channel, uh, I use a few different colors to do a little tinting and a little realism and stuff like that. I'm gonna pause for a second. Let me get it. I forgot a tool. So hold on. Okay, sorry about that. All right. So the way that I do it is, um, I'm gonna put some color down, and then we're gonna sponge. Okay. I'm gonna sponge out. And I have four different colors that I like to use. It's a yellow. Any yellow do. I have a yellow from Vallejo. Uh, Angron Red Clear from Citadel, Jackie Hoff Nice Shade, and Agrax Earth Shade. All right, it's a brownish color. All right, so we start off with those four colors. And I want to put just a little bit. You don't need a lot. Not even a drop. See what I just put down right there, right? Yeah, you know, and I put a little reference picture up there. All right, so what I do is, uh, this is going to be more like a wash. All right, so we're going to put more water than anything. And then let's put it in there and let's spread it out. I've got a nice old brush here. All right. I need a little more water than that. And there we go. But you won't be able to tell this method that I always use with the yellow. But you'll probably be able to tell better with the other colors. Now, and I also seal in between these layers, okay? So every time I finish one, I let it dry and seal, okay? So that's what you guys know with the matte clear. All right, so you're going to generously just brush this stuff over. Don't let it sit. Don't let it pull. All right, you're going to start off with the face. We're going to do a little bit at a time. All right, and then you grab a sponge. These are makeup sponges. You can buy these at a... Anywhere, Amazon sells them these by the hundreds. All right, so you're gonna sponge out, and all we're doing here is we tinting. All right, so see where how it pulls there in these areas. You want to pick that up. You don't want to let it sit there. Okay, that's okay if you leave some dots. Okay, but not too big of a dot. Remember, this is only one sixty out scale. I'll usually do this stuff with like. A, With the quarter scale bus, this is a quarter scale bus right here. It's big compared to size, okay. So you can leave some of these little dots that come up, but don't leave too many and just leave the smaller ones. The other ones you can pick up with a dry brush or with a Q-tip or something, but don't let the big ones sit there. It's not gonna look right. All right, let's continue. Keep on brushing around. All you're doing is you're tinting the skin to have a little bit of a yellow tone. All right. And I usually start off with the yellow. <clears throat> All right, so let's do that. Let's not try to let it pull in the crevices either. Make sure you grab it all. Now this is damp, so you can just you know damp around. You could turn around and just pick up. But I got some nice little dots warming up there and I'm gonna leave those I'm gonna let that dry all right, I want some of that skin tone variation and stuff like that all right so that's a good thing all right your skin has a bunch of different colors in it 
All right, so you want to, if you want to do some kind of realism, this is how, that's what you got to do. All right, there's a lot of steps that are involved with um, the way I do the skin tones. I do pastels. All right, I do a little bit of shading with different things. So, just but it's not hard. It's a very easy process. It could be a little bit time consuming at times, but and if this doesn't. You can always go back and add a little bit more if you want with some freckling and things like that. But the way that I do it, everything's already happening. And I'm assuming it's because of the sealer that makes that kind of little leaves freckles behind. So it saves me a step. Because I used to do the tinting and then the freckling on top. But now the way that I do it with this... It actually saves me a step. Okay? So, just make sure you just pick up all the excess and the crevices and things like that. Don't let that pull. Okay? So, he has a, like, a nice little different tint already. That's what you want. This is good. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Oops, I got a little bit of too much paint right there. So we're going to let this dry. And then we're going to come back and do another color. Okay? Be back in a little bit. Okay, so let's start with the... Now, you can do either or. You can do either the red or the blue. Now the reason why I'm going with the red first is because I don't want to go in with too dark of a, um, I want to go more with the paler skin, so I think I'm going to use the blue as last. Now, does it make a difference? I don't know. I've been doing this, and that's the way I method I do it. If I want to go with a little bit more of a darker skin and, you know, tanner skin, I use the red last. But that's me, though. But, you know, you guys could do either one, so. Um. I do use the brown last though. Yellow first and brown last. The other two you could test yourself and try out and see what you come up with. Alright, so I'm using red, a little bit of red I put in there and mixing the water. Alright, and that should be good. Okay, I sealed the kit. Okay, so we're going to go generously all over the kit with the red. Same thing as before. Get a new sponge though. Do not use the one with the yellow. And see how it, it's not properly sitting, it's kind of beating off. You want that. Alright.
two of freckles. So one a little more pronounced than others, that's okay. All right. All right, so I'm gonna put the stick on them. And we'll let it dry, then I'm gonna seal, and then we're gonna come back and do it, do it again with the blue. All right, so we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so let, let's continue. I got Dragonhoff Nightshade, okay? Blue. Same thing. Let's continue the way we're doing. Start with the face. Trying to miss anything. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so we're gonna let him dry. Same thing, same process. We continue with the next color. The next kind of color is gonna be a little different. Okay. Okay, so the next step is. <clears throat> Acrax Earthshade, or like a more like a brown. And you're not gonna brush it on, you're gonna freckle it on. Okay, so basically what you're gonna do is grab some of this stuff here. You're gonna dilute it like we've been doing. much I hate these tubs I swear <laughs> all right we're still gonna need the blue all right you can dilute it but not as much all right and what we're gonna do is we're gonna freckle it out and I'm gonna show you how we do that that I like to use I like to use like a little bit of a stiffer angle brush okay I'm gonna f get the paint onto the brush and I'm gonna freckle it on just like that okay so I'm gonna show you real quick really easy step now you can do this with a low pressure airbrush and things like that I like to do it this way I mean you can you know either or it's fine you're gonna get a little more variation with this. And all you do is you just do that all over the kit. You get these little brown spots. Just keep an eye, make sure you don't you like nothing huge in there, right? Just use the brush like we've been doing to get those heavier ones out. That one. 
Okay. Let's continue. Can you see it better now? All the colors. Okay. Now we're going to let this dry. And when we come back, We'll continue and I'm going to do the veining next, okay? So make sure you dry this, seal it. Okay, and then um, uh, we'll continue. We're going to do some veining. Hello and welcome back. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do, start doing some shading with some pastels. All right, now, for if you're new to the channel, uh, I keep a bunch of brushes for pastels only and I keep them separate from everything else. I don't mix them and you know I I never clean these out either so just so you know. And depending on the size of the kit that you're going to be using also depends on the size of the brush. All right, so I just sacrificed this little thin brush right here, okay, for this job. All right. Now sacrificing means that you know I use them for pastels only and that's it and I keep them separate. Oh, a nice little rubber band. All right, and I keep them separate from everything else so I'm gonna get them all mixed up okay and I keep them in my little trusty little bucket all right so uh, I'm gonna start doing some shading uh, right now I have something that is in more into the uh, these are pan pastels they are not cheap but they'll last you forever all right I think it's a good investment they work great uh, a lot of great painters out there use them and stuff like that. I believe I learned to use from uh, Matt Morozik uh, watching one of his videos one time. All right, and the color that we're going to be using here to start off with, it's a very, very strong, pungent color. And this is the red iron oxide. If you need a number, it's 380.5. Uh, that's the number on it okay so that's the color we're going to be using all right see i keep my browns and stuff like that on this stack i got another stack right there and then i keep my purples and violets and stuff like that here on this little stack we're going to be using a couple of those colors there maybe one or two all right but the main color right now that we're using is the red iron oxide it's a very strong color i love using this for shading if you watch my videos you know what i'm talking about if you haven't Go back and watch one. <laughs> all right. So you know they're fun, they're long, you know, exciting, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. So, all right. But basically, the reason why I'm using a really it's a smaller kit. I want to get more into the details with the smaller thin brush. Do not wet this. Do not lick it. Do not nothing like that. So you want this dry. All right. Same thing with the pastel. You're not going to mix anything with it. You're just going to grab it. It's very powdery. The pigments are very very. This is a very, very pigmented uh, pastels, all right? So, you know, you can clean them up with a, with a little cotton with alcohol. Or I have, uh, if I can find it here. No. Nope. Well, uh, here we go. They have a name for this stuff. And forgive me if I say it wrong. Uh, yeah. These are by Fiber Castell, and it's Kneadable Art Eraser. All right, now this stuff wipe, wipes the pastel like, like if it wasn't even there. All right, and that stuff works great. 
All right, so let's continue. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the folds and the creases and things like that. So watch how I do it. I keep a fil filbert brush, all right? And you can see that I never clean these suckers, okay? So I just wipe them off and I continue on, all right? So the fold for the chest where his, uh, the muscle for his chest is. See how I put a little pastel in there? And I'll show you how to blend it in. Okay, with the filbert brush. Just try to do the muscle tones. Let's enhance those. We're going to do double shadows. First, we're going to go with the pastel, and then we're going to go with a little bit of a paint with acrylic. All right. But all these folds and stuff like that just add some color in the belly button along the line of the belly. All right. All the creases and all the folds. All right. I just apply it gently. Don't go mango, don't go crazy. All right. Blow off any excess. Do not try not to spit. Do not try to put any liquid in there. All right. Keep your mouth dry. Do not spit on your kit. All right. Because then it just becomes very cakey. You don't want that. All right. Like right here in the neck. It's a very simple process. Just, just don't overdo it. Now, once you seal this, if you lose some of that shadows, you can always go back and work on it and you put some more on there. There's no problem with that, all right? If you want to add some more shadows afterwards, it's okay to do that, even after you paint it. All right, you can always go back and forth. You can add shadows. You can add highlights. I have lighter colors. Okay, you can add highlights if you want. Okay, and I got a lot of stuff in the whites and the grays here. All right, so I got a bunch of different tones and different colors and I wish I had more but they're very expensive and I try to keep the ones that I usually use all right but I bought this years ago and I'm never gonna go through this whole thing anytime soon all right you see how I apply it and it's really light and everything all right and just in the curves if you want to accentuate something I just put it in there. You're gonna blend all that stuff in. Okay. All right. So let me show you real quick how it's done. So I put colors here in all these folds, and then I just blend it in with the filbert brush. All right. And you're gonna kind of like soften it up a little bit. All right. And remember, if it looks gnarly right now, like you know, very strong, don't worry about it. Same thing with all the dots. If you see all the dots there and stuff like that, see how it, look? it looks very gnarly. It looks very dark right now and everything. And trust me when I tell you, we're going to get there, okay? Don't worry. So I said, I'm going for realism. So when I do realism for the skin tones, this is the method that I use. All the stuff that we've been going through, this is how I do it, all right? And if you want to do it the way that I do it this is how it is done okay there we go and a little bit of blending once in a while just rub it off you know just get rid of some of the excess okay I need to put a little bit more in the neck there okay so this is the shadow part guys and right now we're just adding shadows we in sexual accentuating these these muscle tones okay and all everything else and we're gonna we still got to do more shadows and we're gonna be doing highlights okay so it's just step by step just make sure you get everything that you need to get I put a little bit inside the ear all right behind the chin uh, the cheek this jawbone right here Put a little bit underneath here. This is where shadow is. But I'm going to show you another technique with the shadows too. This is going to enhance your kit even a lot more. Alright, so. So, you don't want to put too much because this head is tilted a little bit more. So just follow the line of the neck. Just like that. Alright. Okay, so let's accentuate this 
little pout that he's got going on there in the chin a little bit underneath the lip right. also I'd like to add a little color to the lip all right we're going to be painting the lips later on but just adding a little bit of that dark color doesn't hurt okay and inside the creases of the lip all right in the middle of the upper lip right there in that spot okay along the side of the creases of the nose just add a little color okay same thing on the other side okay eyes all right they're going to do two tones in the eyes they're going to start off with this and get in there and get in the shadows under in the upper part right here Okay. And doesn't worry. Don't worry if you get it in the in the eye. You're going to be painting that anyway. Okay. So you don't have to be careful in this part right here. All right, right now. But get some underneath there. Okay. You can put some in the nostrils. All right. Get in there and get some color in those nostrils. Now, get a little bit right there where his, in a little bit right there. Mm -hmm. Let's do that right there. <sighs> yes, yeah, so everything's going to look a little gnarly. Hairline. All right, do the whole hairline. All around the hair. It doesn't matter if you get it on the hair itself, just go ahead and get it around the hair. Make sure you do the hairline. Alright. Some in the ear. Okay. Get some shadow down there. Get some shadow down here. like around along the jacket wherever the jacket is touching the skin all right and then you can get inside a little bit and add a little skin shadow in the side inside part right here it's okay if you do that right there okay you can go a little darker in there since the skin is underneath the jacket you can add a little shadow in there all right, don't be afraid to go in there and just throw some some pastel in there. All right, same thing goes for this side. Don't be afraid to put some color in there. All right, you could do that on the bottom too. Hold on, but we'll get to there. Let me finish up here. Let me do a little blending. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. All right. You go nice and gently, you blend it in. See how I rub it off? There are the eyes. Anywhere you see like a fold or something like that, you know? Nice and gently. There you go. See how it's looking? The hairline. Just blend the color in. Where we with the jawline. Okay. And then continue. Just get your brush in there and blend it in. Okay. Yeah, it's looking pretty pretty gnarly, right?
if you haven't watched my channel or you're not used to doing this and you're trying it right now what I suggest is you go out there and, and seal this right? but from far away very lightly okay you don't want to put to make this wet you want to just spray over spray from far away and just lightly spray this okay so this way you don't wash out any of this uh, well, you know what I'm gonna put a little color got exposed there all right but don't overspray too thick not even you know just from far away you just want to miss it all right I usually go from pretty far like two feet away okay and I spray it and let it sit let it dry I'm gonna skip that step right here and I'm gonna go on and spray some more shadow and I'm gonna show you how to do it huh? but if you don't feel comfortable doing this then don't do it. It's pretty simple. All right, so I'm gonna put a little thinner in my brush and a flow improver. All right. Hold on a second. And we're gonna use Shadow Flesh by Pro Acro. All right, very lightly. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna hit the shadows and I wanna hit it from the bottom like this. But I'm not gonna do it from close, I'm gonna do it from far away. And very gently, that much right there that's it not this very softly I'm gonna hit it from the bottom all right what it's gonna do is gonna hit the shadow areas from under the skin from underneath okay so it's directly underneath I'll start spraying and I'm gonna start with this arm right here all right. And just barely turn your figure around a little bit now I'm going towards the hands, okay? Now I'm gonna go in this area over here. All right. Going up, moving up to the chest. Now I'm going up under the neck, under the neck, and then under the face. Okay, turn it around a little bit. Same thing with this hand. Okay, so now I'm going to turn around and hit it from the back side. Same thing. This arm right here and this arm right here. And I'm going towards the top part of the arm. It's a little much right there. It's okay. And right there. Okay, so you're wondering what the hell does that do? Right. I'm just enhancing those shadows a little more. Right, so I'm going to show you something real quick. Right. So you're looking to figure from the top. The light usually is going to hit from the top, right? Now this is a the figure is pretty dark as it is right now, all right. But then watch what I do when I flip over. You see that, okay? And now look at the color than me. It's totally different, right? Again, from the top, you see the little bit lighter, and when you turn from the bottom, you see all the shadows and stuff. You're going to see a darker color, all right? That's what you want, okay? All right, so you're going to let this dry. And once it dries, you seal it. All right. And like I said again, even, you you know, you didn't spray the whole thing. So you're going to have to be gentle with the spraying with the sealer. All right. So when we come back, we're going to do, um, we're going to do our first highlight. All right. We'll do this purple a little bit later. All right. And I'll show you what to do with that. But for now, let's uh, let's let it dry, seal. When we come back, we're gonna continue painting. All right, so let's continue. So now, uh, it's not a highlight that we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just blend everything together right now. <clears throat> everything, all the work that we did, we're gonna try to blend it in. Okay, and the color that we're gonna use is tan flesh, which is the original base color of the, when I did we did the first part of the skin tone. All right. So, the way we're going to do this is going to be a gentle spray over. All right? And you're going to do a gentle spray over the, over the whole skin tone. All right, you're going to blend everything together. Okay, and like I told you before, you might have to go back and forth a little bit, adding shadows that might be covered and things like that. But as long as you do this um, from a distance in the light spray over, 
all right let it dry you might have to go over it again all right little steps at a time layer it's all about layers guys it's not about just trying to get everything done at one time it's all about doing layers okay so we're gonna do gentle layers and it's gonna be a mist over you don't want to use a lot of paint either so you want to do more like a I hate to do percentages and stuff like that because I, I go by what I I see and what I feel but kind of like a 60 40 maybe 60 paint 40 thinner or whatever you use to dilute your paint all right You don't want this to be too, you, know, you want this to be somewhat translucent. You're going to have to go with a 50-50, I guess. All right, but you want translucency. You want to conserve some of the stuff, the work that you did. You don't want to get rid of it. You want to save it. So you're going to want to tr make this somewhat translucent. Let me thin this down just a little bit more. All right. I will start with a 50-50 on this. I think that's a good. All right, let me clean my brush. Okay. A little backflow. Right. Very lightly. This is how much you want. Watch over here. That's how much you want to spray. You can barely see it. You're going to do layers. You're going to do one pass, and then you're going to let it dry, and then you're going to do another, okay? All right, so let's start. And look how far I am. I'm, the width of this, what you can see, okay? That's how far I am. Let me see, right there. You see my needle right there? And this is my kit. That's about as far as you want to be. All right? A little splatter. I'm gently throwing paint down. All right, doing the face, the arm. And this is going to lighten up all the stuff that you did. Very lightly. You see how I'm swirling around? That's how you want to do it. So everything is starting to come together. All right, doesn't look as gnarly anymore, right? I still need a little bit more. Try to preserve some of those shadows very lightly, just all over. I'm just trying to blend everything together. You're not trying to put too much color down, just blend it in nice and gently. See some some of the freckles. The veinings still there. Okay. Now I'll let this dry and I'm gonna seal it. Even though I'm not done yet. Wait, hold on a second. So what I want to do is I want to let this dry seal it and what I want to do is go back and just accentuate some of these muscles again all right before I go on a little bit more 
all right just barely some shadows here and there we're gonna add the purple okay I'm gonna show you where when we're gonna do that and just accentuate some of these shadows back bring some of those shadows back a little bit in certain areas all right, all right because I needed to add some paint uh, to blend some of the stuff in but I lost some of the shadows and I want to bring those back okay so we're gonna do that when I come back all right so let's just let this dry and we'll seal it and then come back Okay, so he's all sealed up. Let's in re-enhance some of these shadows. We're gonna go back with the same color, red on our oxide, red iron oxide. Okay. Now there's certain ones that I want to do. I want to do down here a little bit in the chest, a little bit on the neck, maybe some of these muscles here on these arms. Not too much. We get some nice color, nice. Nice color, nice texture going. You see that? We still have to do highlights. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that color. Then do a, one last spray over with this original color. And then we'll work on the highlights. Okay. All right. So now, let's put this away. Guys, don't get this on your clothes, on your hands, you know, on your rug, or this stuff is really tough to come out. All right. So now, I'm going to do magenta extra dark. Okay. And that's this color right. magenta extra dark there it is right there be sure you whenever you flip it over you have the cover on all right that's the next color we're going to use and wipe my brush okay now this is for the eyes i'm going to go under Neat. I'm gonna give the eye shadows a little bit right here, and then that little fold right here. Same thing on the other side. Give it a little bit in that shadow. See, so doing these shadows right there like that. All right. And go in the eye again. We're gonna paint that. So, if you want to paint that color right there, so make sure you make, make sure you got some color. It's gonna look a little dark. And then, this is when you get that tired look. Under the eyes bags under the eyes just like that okay looks like a raccoon right now so all right you're gonna put a little bit on the lips okay and I like to put a little bit under the nose just to give it color like under the nostrils and all that stuff around here
Okay. And here. Nice and gently. There we go. Okay, but what you're doing is you're putting a little blood flow in the skin. Alright. Put a little bit on the nipple. Expose. Okay. Just give some color. Next thing you want to do is you want to the hands. Okay. Just very little. In those cre creases right there very very gently all right just put very little color same thing on this side just very little let those white the knuckles stay white just go on the creases a little bit on the sides just to give them a little bit of blood flow on the hands all right when And just a little bit of those veins. Alright. Alright. With the filbert. With the filbert. Very gently. You're not gonna brush away. You're gonna mostly mostly dab in there. And just to get your color and your blending a little bit in. Alright, and same thing goes here. I'm gonna soften up a little bit. All right, not too hard. Same thing on the lips. All right, and there you go. It's not as strong, right? All right. Okay. Now, next, let me cover this up. All right. Now, with the same color that you sprayed over the kit, you're going to do it again, very gently, I still got some left over in my brush, so again, very gently we're going to go over the entire kit, just to blend in those things that we just did. Guys, what do you think? So far, okay. See that work we just did? It just we just blended everything in right there. All right. One more step, and then the skin tone will be pretty much done. Okay, we're gonna work on how we see the hairs and the eyes and all that. But the, as far as the skin goes. One more step and that's it. So let's let this dry, okay, pretty well, and then we'll, we'll seal it. So we did light misting, so this should dry pretty quick. But we'll be back a little later. All right, thank you. All right, so the next step we're going to do is a highlight, and the highlight we're going to do with the olive flesh. Now, I basically use for everything for the spray painting with the airbrush three colors. We started off with the tan flesh. We did the base coat, and then we did the overspray. We did the shadows with the shadow flesh, and with the pastels and all the other steps and things like that, right? Before spraying with the airbrush, and then we're gonna do the yellow flesh. Three colors, that's it, okay? There's no mixing, nothing. These colors are all really cool from Pro Acro, I love them. I get great results all the time with these, okay? Highly recommend them. 
I also like to use the Fairy Flesh set from uh, Vallejo. Those are great colors also to use for as a set to do skin tones. I also like um, Scale Color. All right, Scale Color has a nice flesh tone set that I like to use from them too. I, I, you know, sometimes I use those to do other for females like highlights and things like that. I like to use those too. Um, but basic painting, three colors right here, boom, and the use of pastels and the tinting and the freckling and all of this stuff. That's it. It's pretty simple. I don't go crazy going mixing colors and doing all this stuff. And if I have to do more highlights, what I like to do sometimes is add a little bit of uh, pastel on the light side. And if we have to do that, I'll show you. If not, you know, then, then there's other videos that I have where I did do that. Okay, but um, everything is based on what I get, results I get at that time. All right, so. But there are other tools out there that you can add to enhance your kit. All right. Uh, do we need to add five o'clock shadow? He has a very baby face <laughs> look, and I, I don't think you know. Uh, I look at pictures. This one right here is a little bit on the dark side. The one I'm showing you here, and the profile and everything. But uh, I'll post another picture up after we get done with this, and we'll see if uh, any. Um, what you call it needs to be done. All right, and we'll do some. We'll see where we're at, and we'll we'll do some work on them if we have to. And obviously, I'm going to show you, but you know, we're getting close to the results that I want out of this, and um, and I'm pretty happy where we're going. Okay, so let's and look at the color, guys. And I'm doing a very translucent. You know, um, I thinned it down pretty good. Same thing about maybe 50 50 here, okay? But it's very flowy. So we did the shadows from below, all right? So now we're doing the highlights from the top, okay? Let me push this out of the way, okay? So I'm from you know, I'm pretty far away, all right? So I'm gonna start spraying, I'm gonna start with the forehead. All right, just be careful for it with the, um, see how spattering like that? Just be careful with that. I start off with the head up here. Now I start working my way up to the face. See how it does that right there? You don't want that. Make sure you wipe these off. Starting off at the top of the face, the bridge of the nose, all right, the arms, shoulder, right here, the chest, the abs, just adding color, other shoulder, arms. I go my skin to see where uh, the happy trigger point is. Going back into the abs, All right, shoulder, side of the arms, very lightly. turn them around obviously with the light I'm going from the straight from the top right that's where I want the light to hit Sit shoulder So you don't want the splattering that's going on like that right there. You want more of a right there. 
that's how I hit the trigger. That's, that's what's going on. All right, so hopefully you can see that right there. I'm hitting the top of the hand. And I want to hit that side of the cheek. Once you spray this over, you should be good with your clear. All right. So let me go let this dry. Let me hit it with a coat of clear. And then when I come back, we'll review it. All right. All right, guys. So there you go. No, I'm pretty happy with that. See when you seal it, how it, everything just kind of blends in together. All right. I'm really, really happy with that. I don't know if you guys can see it yet, but once you start throwing in the other colors, the color of the jacket, the hair, the eyebrows, all that stuff, once we get done with that, um, everything should start, the lips, Everything should start popping out, you know, all these colors and stuff. I really like where it's going. All right. We'll do little details like the nails and all these things like that, and that we should be good. Still got work to do. All right. So we'll finish off the face and everything. All right. And his, the skin tones part, and then we'll work on the jacket. All right, and the pants should be pretty easy. I don't think they should be any difficult. Same thing with the jacket. We just got to put a lot of that brown back in there, and then we're going to do some leather work. All right, we're going to try to get that that tone on that jacket. All right. I don't know if that picture is the right tone, depending on the way the light is sitting it. All right, but it's got like a little bit of a wine color to it. All right. That's the way I like to. That's the way I see it. All right. So we're gonna try to simulate that. But I really like where this is going. Tell me what you guys think. Right there. All right. All right. So it's kind of late for me. So I'm gonna go see how you when you put the magenta in. How it just gives it like that little bit of a blood flow look to his um, same thing with the eyes. Okay. So, all right, so there is that right there. Okay. And we'll get to uh, do some more work tomorrow. All right. This is where I'm at right now. So we come back and we'll finish them off. All right. See you guys later. All right, so I pulled a wet palette out. All right. And uh, just going to do a little bit of um, the lips and paint, maybe put the eyes in. The brown hair. We'll see how much we can get done. It's a little late. It started a little late today, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get done. So I'm a little tired. And it's late already, so. But let's see what we can do today. All right, right now, so at least. So I'm going to put a little bit of a red blood red from uh, um, Tim Gore's Bloodline. This made by Createx. It's still available if you guys look. pretty good paint just put a little bit and then I have uh, from the same line uh, natural lip okay and I'm gonna do a little mix and the mix is gonna be the base and then the highlight is gonna be the just a plain lip all right, so we put some down, and I want to glaze it a little bit, you know. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of the natural lip. All right, just grab some here, and I'll grab a little bit of red. Not too much. That's a little much. 
Just add a little bit more. That's a little better. You don't want it too red or too pink. You just want it just right. There we go. Right there. Alright. Alright, so. Alright. You don't want your brush too overloaded. Here, let me get my uh, other glasses. I want to make sure I'm not blocking you guys either with my big old head. So I tend to do that a lot. So, all right. So, just grab a little bit. Let's just put a little color in there. Yep, I use my fingers a lot, guys, so. Even though they're big and clunky. Alright, so right there. So there you go. Ooh, I got some paint. Come on. Let me clean that up. That's why you seal it. See how I got paint there? That's why you seal your kit, guys. All right. And I got my hands dirty right there, my finger. Let me clean that up. So we've got the base color in there, which is a little bit red. That's okay. All right, next, uh, let me paint the eyes. And what I'm going to use is white sands from scale color. I like this color for the eyes because it's not white. It's got like a little, it's like an old, really off white. Let me put it that way. Okay, for doing the eyes, I like to use these small Tamiya brushes. All right, they're really, really tiny, small. Get in there. You know, all right. So, I have to wet it a little bit, get a little bit of paint on it. Okay, so next, let's do a little bit of the pink. I need to mix that a little bit. It's got a little, a little water. So mix the pink. Right. And I'm going to use this same uh, brush. Okay. No, no. What I want to do is I want to do a little highlight. All right. A very little bit, just on the top of the lip. Just do little lines. Okay. You want to do like the edges of the lip. All right.
I just do like little lines. It's very subtle. You can go even lighter than that if you want. It's very subtle. Alright, so next up, let's do the hair, or should we do the eyebrows? The eyebrows, he's got very light eyebrows, and they're very short, for what I see. Unless his hair is like really, really um, light. So let's throw a little bit of black brown here, real quick. Alright, so I pulled a few colors out here, so the first one we're going to do is we're going to use some chestnut brown. Alright, I'm going to go with a lighter brown. And then we'll hit a little bit highlight browns on top of that. But I want to start off with this color first for his eyebrows. Not for his hair, just for his eyebrows. Just put a little bit there. All right. And I'm going to use this brush again. Just the fine lines. All right. And. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why you seal it. <laughs> I didn't like the way that one came out. So we're gonna do it again. All right. See how this one came out? This one came out nice. So we'll do the same thing. Hopefully it'll work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it with a lot of lighter color. Okay, I'm going to use this Arabic shadow. It's got like a little golden color. See on the blondish side. Let's try it. Let's see. Let's see what it does. I may like it. I may not. Overload your brush. Make sure you got enough paint. Okay, so now to see where he's at, I think we need to put a little bit of color in his hair. All right, I'm, I'm starting to work on this stuff and I want to see how that those colors are blending in. All right, so now we're going to lighten up this color. Sorry about that. We're going to lighten up this color as we go. All right, just brown, just black brown. Nice dark base color. We'll work up to our lighter colors. All right. Look. Just right now, I just want to just want to see where these colors are. You can get, a lot of times you can tell really good 
once you put the hair paint on. There you go. What do you guys think? I think it's starting to look pretty good. Obviously it's not done yet. I'm gonna do some highlights on the hair, put the eyes in, things like that. But I gotta let him dry before I go through anything else. And um, I don't wanna mess anything up. I did get a little pink spot, but I was able to get it out. Alright. Because my hands were so dirty. Alright, but there he is. What do you guys think? It's getting there. It's starting to look like something, so. <laughs> Alright, so uh, when we return tomorrow, we'll continue. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too tired right now. You know, I just want to. Uh, I'm gonna put the eyes in, highlight the hair, do the nails, and that's that's pretty much it. And maybe do some a little bit of shadow work on underneath the cheekbones, but I'll teach you guys how to do that. And put a little highlight in there too. We'll do that with pastels, maybe. All right. But so far, I think it looks great. All right. Nice muscle tone, nice skin tone. The hair complements everything pretty well. He's just got to get it lightened up a little bit. Okay, but I think we're getting to the right direction. I hope, hope you guys see that too. Alright, so we'll finish up tomorrow and we'll put a little hair on him too. <laughs> Alright, so see you later. Okay, hi everybody, welcome back. And um, before I get started, I want to run something by you. Yeah, I did the eyes. I did not, well, I did record a bit. You can't really see anything because my head is in the way. But I use the decals and I'll leave a link down below for the video of the decals that I use and you know how to use them and stuff like that if you guys never did anything like this before so I'll leave a link down below so I'll leave a link down below so you guys can reference to that um, to that video if you want to learn how to do that it's not that hard it's just you know my head was in the way when I was doing it you can't really see anything so we're gonna just link it over to there and maybe I'll link another video where the man the gentleman who made it Evolution X the decals for these he also has a tutorial on how to do that so I'll link both videos this way you guys have an idea how to do that if you've never done it before or if you want to paint them that's totally up to you I like to use the decals they give the kit a little bit more realism and there he is right there and I put him towards the left a little bit. All right, but there he is right there. Okay, so what we're going to work on now is going to be the hair. Okay, now for the hair, there are some videos out there on how to do hair, but the best one that I found, and I said this, I think in one of my last videos and stuff, uh, Vince Venturella, he's a mini painter, but he does also like, you know, busts and things like that. And he has a beautiful set of videos how to do blonde hair, red hair, brown hair, black hair. Okay, so I highly suggest you guys check out that those videos. I'll leave a, I'll link him up too down in the bottom too for those videos. Uh, hit him up. He's an amazing painter, and the way he explains his method, it's really really good, really easy to follow that kind of stuff. So. Uh, it takes a little practice, you know, I, I think I did it already twice and it, you know, I'm still learning how to do it, but um, it's it's very, it's a very 
very, very simple way to follow how to do hair properly, right? Uh, hair is probably one of the hardest things to do. So, you know, I was having a hard time one day with uh, painting one of my kids and I found his videos and I followed them and they worked out great, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off painting with his. Now he has a formula for uh, a recipe for how to do those, uh, how to do the hair. And what I would like to do is, I don't have the same exact paint that he has for his one, so I had to replace some of them with uh, some of the stuff that I have. I don't have everything that he has. I do have some, but not everything. Okay, so, um, like I'm gonna try to simulate some of the hair that he has there in that picture. Okay, um, as you can see, I switched the pictures too. I don't know if I did it the last video or not, but, okay, but he has a little bit of, it's a brown hair with little hints of blonde with the light hitting it. And I see some other pictures and stuff like that, a little tone of red there in, in there too. So we're gonna try to simulate all that stuff. I'm gonna try the best I can. Let's see how this works out. All right, and um, we'll go from there. All right, so I do have the wet palette out. All right, um, I don't know how long this is gonna take me. So, and I do like to take breaks from painting now and then, so. So the first color I'm going to try out is the red leather. I want to see how this works out. It's one of the closest colors that I can find to where I want to go on uh, the beginning. So right now you got a base of the brown, but we are going to cover a lot of that up. And we're going to go back in there with uh, the black brown. This is black brown right now, right? So I'm going to lay some of this stuff down here. Start off with this color right here first. Okay, so that's good enough for me to start to work with. I got all the color in that I where I want it. Um, I think I got a nice start with this. Okay, so let's move on to the next color. Okay, so you know how I try not to hide my mistakes. I used uh, red leather for like a base color I kind of like that color but once I put it on I'm not too happy with it right, I want to go a little darker than that so uh, I'm gonna use Bosch Brown by scale color That's better all right so I'm gonna use Bosch Brown see how it looks I wasn't happy with the other color so let's go with that it is what it is make a mistake try again okay so let's see how it looks with this color I see darken it up a little bit and that little bit just did it I think all right, it's not so reddish orangey color, I guess, if you want to call it. But it's got a little bit warm, warmer color to it, so I'm okay with that. All right, let me get some of these edges, and then we'll move on. Okay. All right, so first thing that we want to do, we want to establish some of the shadows again, all right? So this time I'm going to use uh, Black Brown by Pro Acro. You're going to want to do, 
is run a thin layer of this stuff just in the folds, all right? And underneath, you know, stuff like that, the creases. You don't want to do it all over the place and you want to, don't want to put it all over the creases anywhere, all right? Just on the folds and under the creases where you think the, the shadows are going to be need to be established, all right? So, and also remember that the head is tilted and if you're going to create a halo, it's going to have to be more around this area and not so much on this area because the head is tilted to one side, all right? So take that in mind too when you, uh, when you, um, when you start pu putting color down for your highlights and everything. All right, so right now I'm just going to put a little bit of wash on this, just very lightly. Okay, and just, I'm going to put it in these folds where I think these shadows should be. Okay. And not do it everywhere. Alright. And again, this is like a wash, very thinly. I'm gonna look under here. In areas where you think the shadows should be, where your light is gonna hit, uh, you know, you wanna opposite. So light is going to be hitting from up here, but you know, you're going to have to add some shadows and things like that. So you're going to establish shadows now. Okay, so just like that. Okay, you see where I established those shadows right there. All right. All right. So when I come back, I'm gonna start doing pretty much the mid tone. Okay, and we'll start working with that. So I'll be back in a few. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit before we start again. All right. So now we're gonna move into establishing a mid tone. So what I'm gonna be using is the mahogany by uh, by Aho. Now you can notice that here I put the mahogany by uh, Proacro and it's not the same. It's darker. So um, I tend to use this to go a little bit lighter in the color. So you're going to establish your halo. On the figure okay so like I said before your light is going to come in from the top so uh, maybe a halo should go a little bit more down this way than here okay so let's start with this side all right and I'm going to generously put it on top and cover And you're going to also want to put this color in all the raised areas, too. Like, for example, like right around here, where this part is raised, here.
Okay, so now I'm going to start pulling down very small lines of this color down. Okay. Just not that much from the top towards the bottom, but not under the folds. Just keep it on top. Very randomly, just bring it down so this way you got a nice blend later on of this color down into these other areas. Now see where this the light ends right there? I'm trying to just just lightly just bring that color down a little bit. Alright. Not a lot, just randomly go around and just do that. Okay. And your halo is like right around there. Alright. So keep on bringing some of this color down. This side is going to be a little bit lighter, just a little bit lighter than the other side because of the tilt. <clears throat> All right. and like I said, I'm just doing these parts that are sticking up. Wherever you think the light is going to hit. So picture the light coming down this way. All right. Don't forget to do some of this front. All right, I'm going to lighten everything up again, so don't worry about that. All right. Just very randomly. Just go around the figure and see where you think you might need to add a little bit of lighter color. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten up the mahogany a little bit. So I'm going to take some over here. Alright. And I'm going to take some of this worn flesh. And mix it in. Just lighten it up a little bit. Just a little bit more. I'm just eyeballing it, guys. So. All right, right there. So, all right, so I'm going to go a little bit lighter. All right, you're going to start highlighting the top a little bit more. All right. I'm going to sketch in. shorter than the last previous layer but you can highlight those other areas that make them pop out All right. make sure your paint is nice and thin when you do this get a little translucency We'll blend all these things later on all together, so don't worry about it. So it might look a little weird right now, but you'll get there. Hopefully, right? <laughs> so. right. Just do the top of the hairs. There we go. So 
So this side right here is going to take in more light, right? Remember what we talked about that? Establish some nice highlights here. I'm okay with that right now. Okay. So there you go. Go around the head. See how it gets lighter in these folds right here. Let me put a little more in here. See how the darker the color is on the folds, lighter on the top, and just some. Here's the stick out towards the light, you highlight those. Alright, you accentuate those with a little bit of lighter color, and you work your way. See how the halo is up here? Okay, where the halo was established. All right, and I work my way down a little bit down. All right, be right back. I need a little more practice with this method, but I still get better results than what I used to get from here. So as I practice, I hopefully things will get better and a little bit easier. All right. We'll blend all this stuff in together later on. It's going to all look, the brush strokes and everything like that is going to all blend in together. All right, so. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're going to add a little bit more. Okay. One more pass in this part. a little tighter now. Take just the warm flesh. Okay. I'm going to do very, very little. this dry and I'll be back all right. okay so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna glaze all right so we're gonna this is like a really really watered down all right mahogany right here very translucent okay and what you want to do is you want to apply it and blend everything together all right so you're gonna do this gently all over the figure in the hair. Okay. I'm going to do this in multiple passes. Right. Kind of like bring all those colors together. red uh, a little bit darker in certain areas you can do that you can mix in some of these or you can make it lighter same thing you know but I'm trying what I'm trying to do is blend all the colors together and meet not not so much mute these highlights but like give them more of a blend look okay I hate dark I don't know if that's the right choice of words but all right but I'm trying to bring all that stuff all together now Alright, I'm discharging on my hand until I'm happy where I'm getting a nice glaze. Uh -huh. And then I don't want to put too much paint where it's going to cover it up and darken it too much. Especially those areas that you worked on. Alright, but I'm bringing everything into the shadows. Okay, mixing some nice colors. The shadows are not going to be so dark and muted. this first batch of glazing just dry up and then we'll do another one okay 
And then we should wrap it up with the hair, hopefully. Okay, so I sealed it. And now, I'm gonna go once again with the glaze. Okay. And try to tone it down just a little bit. Not tone it down, but blend it, glaze it. Just blend everything together. Hide those brush strokes. this all together right here. There you go, guys. I'm really happy right there with it. Alright, like I said, I need a little more practice with this technique, but go to Vince's site and um, check it out. He's an amazing painter, an artist, and uh, he has a way to explaining and teaching these things in uh, I think he does a better job than I, I can ever explain to you. Um, so I would head out out there and check it out. I'll leave the link down below for his site. Check him out. Okay, so next, if we want to seal this, next time we come in here, we do the jacket. All right, so stay tuned. Hey, so welcome back, and um, now we're going to do the jacket. Um, so one of the things that I want to do, what, what I did before off camera is I painted everything back to the brown. All right, the um, black brown. All right, bye bye, Hejo. All right, German back brown. Did another coat. <clears throat> okay, so what I want to do next is we're going to do a little masking. I'm going to use a combination of Silly Putty and I think I'm going to go get some, um, some plastic wrap. Okay, and the reason why is I don't want to get the putty on things that I already like. I'm afraid to put it on now because I'm afraid it's going to pull the eyes out. Everything is sealed, but just in case, I don't want to get you know. Um, now if I didn't put the eyes in, I would have used silly putty, but um, for now, I would like to go get some for um, some plastic wrap stuff that your wife uses in the kitchen. And uh, I really like the way the hair came out. Alright, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we're going to do, it because the reason why is we're going to do a lot of stippling. Now, I am going to put putty in here in the middle, and uh, probably around this arm, but here, where this arm and this um, jacket, you know, collide here, they join up, I want to put some plastic wrap, and I'll put maybe some putty around the arms, and then the head, okay? So, let me go get that, let's get that ready. And I'll show you real quick how to do it, maybe a little bit, and then we'll move on to stippling. All right, so if you did like me, I stole this from my wife's pantry, <laughs> some some red rip. So I'm going to put it in underneath the arm and try to. Not, I'm not a pro at this, guys. So obviously, you can tell, but I don't want to get the jacket. Uh, his arm or anything in the skin dirty so I'm just gonna the rest I'm gonna try and get in there with uh, some putty um, you can use a, a sculpting tool the back of a 
with a brush. All right, since all that trim is going to be, you know, I'm not too worried about the trim. You know, the trim is going to be pink, uh, brown, so if you get color on it, you can always redo it. <clears throat> no big deal. Just make sure you get putty wherever the skin is showing. that in a minute so this is you know I'm okay with this because it's you know, we'll see if I have to go back and put some on there I'll do it all right, all right. so now that he's mummified mm, what we're gonna do in the stipple and the color of his jacket it's got like a little bit of a uh, like a reddish wine tone leather if you want to call it. Um, now, what I like to do is when I do leather like this with stippling and stuff, with that effect, I like to use like a heavier body paint, like a gauche or gouache, whatever you want to call it. All right, but I do have a nice dark red here. I don't know if it's, that's going to be the color. All right, but I am going to pick out some other colors, some regular acrylics to try to blend you know in there and hopefully we'll show some of the shadows and some maybe put a little lighter color for the highlights and things like that but what I recommend is I do keep to the side let me see if something here uh, I usually keep like a bunch of um, beater brushes if you want to call them all right and I use these brushes that I beat up for stippling you see how this has I've been beating them up and using these, and I cut the old brushes, the tips, and I and I use this stuff to to beat and to stipple. Now here's another one that I like to use, and you know when you as your brushes get older and all gnarly and stuff like that, what I usually do is just cut the tips off, and I like to use something a little flatter like this to get into the hard to reach edges and stuff like that. All right, so I'm gonna take a few brushes out. I've been putting some more on the side that I really beat up. I got a little, little one just to, uh, you know, and I gotta keep all these together because I'm really doing a number of these. And I don't wanna mix them up with all my other stuff. That's good. All right, so there it is right there. I have a bunch of these brushes. I keep these separate from everything else. So I keep them all nice and tied up in a rubber band. All right. All right, so I want to pick up a few colors, and when I come back, we'll get started, okay? All right, so I pulled a bunch of colors out. Uh, I'm kind of digging Burnt Red from Vallejo and Cavalry Brown. Those two right there. And I'm also digging the Burnt Red from Pro Acro along with Orange, Burnt Orange. I got Red Leather out. And I got a bunch of other colors here that mahogany still, you know, it's got like a little reddish tone to it. But these are the ones that I like the best right now. Where we go with that, we'll see. But what I'm going to start off with is going to be this crimson red. It's just a regular cheap gouache. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so what I'm, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. So forgive me. But anyway, you know, that's what it is right there. Right. So anyway. <laughs> So uh, uh, I'm going to put some here. You don't dilute it. Don't thin it. It's going to be raw. Everything is going to be raw that you're going to put in. All right. You want to build a little bit of that texture, a leather texture. All right. So you don't want to thin it out. Okay. Some of these paints might be a little bit thin, but you want to build it, start building up some texture with this stuff. All right. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some color here. Sometimes they, these things are a little watery to begin with. So it's a cheap brand. I mean, you go out there and spend some money on a more expensive one, but um, for what I use it for, meh, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, so there it is right there. There's the color we're going to start with. All right, so a little bit more on the reddish tone, but that's okay. We're going to use that as a base tone. All right, and the way that I do this is I'll grab a brush and speed up. All right, let me get another... I'm going to use this right here, grab some paint, beat it, get rid of a lot of it, all right, 
we start off right there. Okay. What we're gonna do is gonna start stippling. It's gonna take a while, guys. This is a long process. There's a lot of a lot of jacket there to work on. So we're gonna start off on this side. Start beating it up. All right. Maybe we can start with a bigger brush too. Let me get a bigger brush, so we can go through the process a little quicker. What do you say? I say it's a good idea. All right. So we can get a beater brush. Wait, I did have one big one right here. It's kind of gnarly already. Here we go. Yeah, this one right here. I'm gonna save these for another day. All right. And all you do is cut the tip off, all right? Eventually those bristles are gonna spread out. You're gonna have a little more coverage area once it spreads out a little bit. All right, so stipple it on. Spread it around. I'm squeezing this damn cutter in. And like I said, this is just the start for your base tone. Then we'll mess around with other colors. Maybe we'll come back to this. Okay, so keep that in mind. Just a little around. Good variation and good color all around. And we'll come back around and do uh, we'll do another tone right over it and then you know keep on going back and forth just adding shadows highlights and tone variation okay so natural shadows already in some of these uh, little folds you see that okay see I'm not I'm trying not to keep too much paint on the on the brush, but also not get rid of all of it. You know what I mean? Just don't want to go in too heavy. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but you see how much paint I'm putting down, and it's not that heavy. And I'm retaining some of that shadows and some of the brown coming through. That's what you want. It gives you some nice variation in tone. Okay. Hopefully I'm making sense, so. I learned this, who did I learn this from? I think it was Matt Morozik did, did some leather work like this. And I, the results were really cool. And, you know, I've been using that method for stuff like this for a while now, so. You know, that was an older video. I don't know if he still uses this method or not, but. this dry I'm gonna clean my brushes too you gotta let those dry you can't use them wet all right so when I come back I'm gonna start another color you don't have to seal this I don't want you to seal it because just in case if you messed up and you got some paint somewhere we're not supposed to you're not gonna kick it out and it's gonna be a pain to move so just let it sit for a little bit, let it dry, clean your brushes, and dry them out as best as you can. And then when we return, we'll, uh, we'll continue with the next step. All right, so I wanna show you, I picked some more colors out uh, just to try them out. So I'm gonna tell you what I have here. All right, so this one here is from Pro Acro, and that is the burnt red, okay? It's got a nice little reddish toner to it. And this color right here is 8K Interactive Burnt Red, okay, right there. And it's got a nice darker, that I think this is the color that I want to go with because this is the Vallejo Burnt Red, uh, this one right here, okay. And that's got more towards the brown, which I don't want, all right. This right here has got a nice little wine color, dark wine color to it. 
Mm. And then this one here is way off, so it's got like purple in it. I don't like that. So here, we're going to go with this color right here, which is the Anakin Interactive Burt Red. All right. So we're going to go with that color. And when I, okay, I've got to get something real quick, but when I come back, that's what we're going to start off with. All right. All right. So again, AK Interactive Burnt Red. It's not as thick. Okay. So uh, you might want to go a little bit lighter. I do like the color that I have with this, with the gush. All right. But, um, uh, I want to do a little variation, and then if I have to come back with that same color, we'll do that. Okay, but for now, we're going to go with this one. I'm going to see what kind of effect we get with it. Okay. I would, like, go really thin with it. And let's just give it some tone variation. That's all we're going to do, okay? So, let's see how it works. It's trial and error, guys. Give a little bit of different color. seal it is um, after I do this because if you keep on putting paint and eventually you're gonna start pulling paint up all right so um, just be careful when you do that um, because as you're doing this you might be, be pulling paint up and if you notice you're doing that then you know it's time to stop and seal and protect what you have done already all right so just keep in mind don't be um, don't be afraid to seal it. All right. Don't try to go over too many times things that you already did. So, like this area right here that's all done, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna hit it again. I'm gonna let it dry. So I'm doing the other side now. I'm trying to get paint in certain areas that I want to get paint in. dry a little bit and then I'm gonna seal him <coughs> you guys think so far all right and then we'll hit areas that we need to hit okay so let's try to dry there's areas I gotta hit around here because everything was in the way so I'll try to be careful and do that all right but um and maybe up here a little bit on this part of the jacket <coughs> right here all right, but let's seal it because I don't want to start pulling paint up. All right, so pretty good. All right, I sealed them. All right, and here we go. So we're going to touch up these other areas. Same process, the whole thing. Um, I'm just going to touch those up. I don't know if I'm going to... You know, you guys just follow through the same process. It's not going to be that hard. Just finish it up. And then after that, um, I think I'm going to do a little bit of highlights on some of these raised folds. All right. But um, until then, you know, I'll come back and then we'll, we'll do that. Okay. All right, guys. So there it is right there. All right. I'm really, I just sealed it. Okay, I finished off doing off camera the 
the rest of the jacket it wasn't much just a little dab of the both colors that we used all right so um <clears throat> i'm really happy where it's going all right so i believe the next part that we should do 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 is um doing the logo the the logo the uh the colors all right and we'll do that all right so i'm gonna take a break all right uh if this took a little bit longer than what i wanted to but it wasn't that hard you saw what i did it's not bad you get some nice texture okay on the jacket which i like because you get shadows and a little bit of high, natural highlights on that stuff if you want to add more highlights you can just lighten it up the color just a little bit and just stipple with a little brush that's all you need to do but i like where the effect where i have right now it's not too overdone and it looks really good all right so next we're going to do all the um the emblems and stuff in the back of the jacket the colors all right so um i got a little schmeckle there but i want to put my finger on it yet because i think this is, might be still a little wet so all right but uh he's looking good all right i really like the way it looks i love the skin tone the way now that the skin tone is up against the color that's what i like what we're gonna have to do is do a little bit of detail on these little um we're gonna put a little bit of color we're gonna see how that's gonna turn out we still got to touch up the brown all right but i think the smart thing to do now is to go in here and start working and putting colors in this stuff and you know i've been looking at the uh some of the pictures online you know what color should i go with and all this other stuff um and we'll go from there all right so welcome back i'm gonna start on the emblem and the emblem and the All right. So I have the reference pictures there. Now I want to go more like you see obviously in the bottom you're going to see like a newer fresher looking version of it where on his jacket it's a little bit more like looks more like a worn in version. I like to go with more of the worn in version that's so clean. So but the first thing that I want to do all right, is just paint the whole thing black. And the reason why is because there's so many crevices and stuff like that that I want to make sure that I get black inside those crevices and lines and things like that. And then we'll brush over lightly those and try to preserve those, okay? So what he has done, obviously he says sculpted where your white feathers are, all right, and then where your red feathers fall in, all right, which is nice. It keeps them separate. Now, these pieces right here, I'm going to get my big fingers out of the way. Let me show you here, like these, this is going to be yellow. Okay, like a yellow color with a little bit of a white outline. So you're going to put in a little bit of yellow paint in there. Okay, and uh, I'm probably most like on, like on the inside and things like that. All right, and then, you know, the hair is painted red, obviously, and then the white skull. All right, but then you have all that. But it's going to be more, I think about going more with an off-white, like I said, to try to get the worn out color. And then <clears throat> paint in the letters, okay? And then uh, with red, some kind of red. And then paint the, um, some kind of uh, tannish, like a parchment-looking thing right there, all right? It's got like a nice yellow tint to it, all right? So we'll try to get all that done. All right. It's going to take a while to do this. This is going to be more of a lot of. But everything is outlined. So hopefully it'll make it easy for you to paint. That's the reason why we did it that way. It's a painter's kit. You know. So. Let's hope to see what it's going to look like. Alright, so the color that I'm using is um, 
Just the black uh, from Game Color I picked up. It's a little thinner than uh, than others. I want to use a little bit of a thicker brush on that just to go over. All right. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this like this, you can mask it. Okay. I put a little bit of water to thin my brush, but also to I got a Q-tip ready just to uh, make sure that I have to clean up anything. I'm ready to go. All right. You should have sealed this. All right. So hopefully you shouldn't have any problems. You know the patch, the warrior patch, their badge. is going to be all your outlines and stuff so if you get paint or all this stuff don't worry about it seal once you've done you seal each color all right so if i'm doing the black i'm going to seal the black just in case if i mess up i will, can always go in there and clean up and it's all about you know just trying to maintain what you did before and not having to do it all over again if you mess up you know what i mean like i said i'm not a pro sometimes i, I seal sometimes i don't if i feel comfortable you know but i try to seal between every layers Okay, there, good coverage in there with the black. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry, and then when I come back, we'll um, I'm gonna seal it. When I come back, we'll start off with uh, I don't know if the red or the white. I don't know. We'll look, we'll see. Okay, we'll see when we come back. All right, so I'm gonna start off with uh, using Off White by Vallejo. I don't know how it's gonna cover. I might jump in or maybe add a different color later on all right but um that's where i'm at right now so we're going to start off with that with the whites all right now because it has a dark color as a base i was thinking about painting it over with some kind of gray maybe first but i want to see what it what it does if not we'll just jump in and do something so this is an off-white. What I want to do is I, I want to do the tops only. Okay, guys? On the white. So hit it with the side of your brush a little bit. and see how it goes. It's actually covering pretty good, so let's see how that works out. Don't want it to get cakey or anything like that, so. Okay. See how I did it? Alright, so just go around and hit all the white areas. And then we'll do the we'll do the reds. Right now I'm just hitting it with the side of the brush, gently. I'm just trying to get color where it needs to go. 
and had not diluted this at all. So. It's very runny already. It's, it's weird how Vallejo works. Sometimes you get a paint that's really thin and then other ones are... And I mix my stuff before, you know, we... Uh, I run it through my little mixer before I get on here. And then, you know, I mix it again before I pour it on. So, you know. It's actually covering very nicely, so just gotta have to hit it a couple times because I'm missing certain areas and things like that. Just trying to show you, I'll take my time doing a little bit more detail. Maybe off camera, just fast forward. All right, so there's the white. I need to touch up some of that black that I got in between there, but you want to seal this. All right, let's seal it. Um, I'm thinking about doing the red and then we'll touch up the black later on if we need to. Okay, now the black that I used was that, <coughs> the Vallejo, where is it? Mm. Yeah, put it back because I didn't like it. Uh, the, this black ink color came out really kind of glossy, and I don't want to use that again. I'm going to go, and for the next round, we're going to use like a more matte color, a regular. It was a one that I found right away. I didn't think it was going to be gloss. So I don't want that. I'm going to want to get a more flat color. So we'll, anything that we touch up is going to be flat because I'm spraying. And hopefully it's gonna dull down that gloss and we'll see what we can we'll go with that. Right, if I have to touch up the whole thing again, I'll do it, but I don't think I do. Because I'm gonna be sealing in between with everything, so it shouldn't mat it down. Alright, but um all right, that's where we are right now. I'm gonna seal this and then when I come back, we'll start off with the red. Alright, so let's continue. I'm gonna do the red. And I'm using blood red by uh AK Interactive. I like that. Hold on, I want to look for something else. Hold on. Alright, so I got a matte red by AK Interactive. Put some down here. And the same thing applied as the white, we're going to do with the red. Alright, and we also have to do the inside of these letters, okay? And the little fire, or whatever you want to call it, on his head. He's got some fire going on in there. All right, so um, should I get the shirt? Don't overload your brush, just thin it out of just a little bit of water there that I threw in like that. And if you want to use your wet palette, you go right ahead.
just like that, okay? And the bottom part of the flame is going to be yellow, all right? Just like you see there on the picture, on the bottom. All right, letters. All right, so I'm not going to get too worried about getting it in the outside of the letters, but let's, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to get a little muddy. Got to get color in there. So I'm going to do a pass of, uh, what do you call it? You know what, maybe I should try to see what I do this. In there. It's not out, so. All right, so there's the red right there, guys. All right, so it looks a little sloppy, but we'll fix all that. All right, that's where we're at right now. Yeah, excuse me. So that's where we're at with the red, and we'll come back and we'll continue doing something else. Maybe the yellow, or touch up the black, who knows. All right, so I'll be back in a little bit. Let me steal this. Okay, so let's work on the yellow. I did fix the black, it wasn't that much. So I'll probably touch up a couple more things and that's about it for that. I do want to do the yellow. I'm using uh, I'm, uh, Moon Yellow by Game Color. All right, just put a little bit there. And like I said before, this is going to be like the in inner part of this part of the wing. It's going to be the yellow. Okay, so it's only like a little bit up here in the middle and then in the inside part, okay? And the bottom of the flames on his head. That's what they look like to me, it looked like flames coming up in his Shabby. All right, we'll come back. We'll finish up the up here. Okay, so we're back and pretty much done with the bus, the top, 
torso. The jacket. Really happy the way this is coming out. Alright, so there he is right there. Okay. Off camera I touched up the brown and then I put the gray color that I said that I was gonna put in. Alright. And it looks really really good. I'm really happy the way it came out. Alright, so everything is sealed with him, so I'm gonna just put him on the side for now. Let's work on the pants. So the first thing that I want to do with the pants is to stipple um, the belt. Okay, and I was going to start off with a cavalry, cavalry brown and then maybe hit it with the top with lighter color and the red leather. So we got a nice dark color to start with. Alright. And I'm just going to put some on the palette here. Do some stippling with a smaller brush this time. We're just going to go around and hit that belt. All right, the belt has a little bit of texture in it. So hopefully some of that will show the belt. Alright, so let's start. Same thing we did with the jacket, we're doing with the belt. Don't worry about hitting that. We'll touch it up later on when we're done. I just try to get nice and close. Some nice color variation. I really like that color, you know, but we're going to go a little bit lighter with it. Maybe we'll go back and add a little bit more. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So now it's cavalry, no, red leather. All right. A lot of browns in this, this kit. If you feel like you need to seal, then you go ahead and seal. You're not pulling paint up. Right now I'm doing okay, but I'm not gonna be able to do this for too long because then you're gonna start pulling paint up. All right, so you're gonna have to seal eventually. Depending on your weather conditions and the paint that you use and, and all that stuff. But right now I'm doing okay with this. Right now, I'm just all right. So, there you go. You're gonna leave that. That was a quick, that was really easy, right? You're gonna leave that. Don't forget that we have to do the brass and then we gotta touch this up, but we're gonna. Leave that, let it let it dry, and I'll seal it, and then we'll come back and we'll do the shadows on the pants. All right. All right, so for the shadows of the pants, and here's, I've sealed the belt. Now, I know in the movie it's, it's a lot darker than this, but I need to add some variation to color. All right, otherwise everything is just gonna be just way too dark, and I'm not, I'm not sure, but, I think I like this really good right now, so I'm going to stick with that for now, okay? But for the shadows from pants, I'm going to use, oops, excuse me, uh, from Golden Shading Gray, all right? Now, this stuff might come out a little 
shinier than what I want, but we're gonna mat it down with um, once we seal it. All right, so it's very thin. So I put a little bit of flow improver in there, no thinner. All right. So we're gonna go with that for now. Sign very lightly, guys. We're gonna go. Okay, so you're gonna go very lightly. Okay, just like that in the shadow areas. You don't want to go too crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna start like right around here and just add a little shadow in those folds. In the back of the legs a little bit. Okay, just you see how I didn't add on the bottom, but I added on the top part where the shadow naturally creates right there. All right, so I think that's good. We're gonna let it dry and seal that, okay? It's got a little bit of drying to do. So we come back, we'll see what that looks like and then if it's good, we'll head to the shoes. Okay, so there we are so far, all right? So it's gotta get glued. There he is. All right, pretty cool. All right, so, um, it needs to be matted down just a little bit more, but I'm waiting for it. You know, we'll do it again. We'll hit, I'll hit it again before um, call it a finish. You know what I'm saying? But uh, all right, so there he is right there. Okay, he's looking really good. I'm really happy the way this is going. All right, so the next thing up is shoes. All right, and uh, let me put this away. Get dirty or anything. So the shoes are going to be uh, black. <laughs> Pretty simple. The shoelaces though are, are like a really like a, a, they might have been white at one time, but they're gray. Okay. But um, yeah, we're going to paint the shoes black. But I want to give it a, like a uh, certain parts. I want to give it like a just to mix it up. I'll probably do this, these part soles in the front part. Um, and there's rubber black and then the rest of it just plain black all right um so yeah so not you know they're not the boxing shoes like he wear actually wears but you know the shoes so we're going to try to keep it similar to the colors that he has but it's not the same shoes all right that's i understand that this is a uh, don't forget that this is a fan art so all right so uh, when i come back uh, we'll start doing that we'll just spray it with just regular black and then we'll spray it with uh we'll brush all the rubber around it all right okay so let's do this uh black regular black from any brand not gloss just a man don't do like what i did before okay, so i'm going to put a little flow improver here first two drops a couple of drops of thinner get it started and the paint
All right, so we're going to let this dry. When we come back, we'll put a little bit of that rubber black in there, all right? So, okay, rubber black. Look at, look at this mess. <laughs> all right, it's a lot of color there. Getting close to the end with the figure, guys. We've got to just do the base. And that's most likely there's going to be another video. All right, because this one's getting a little long. little difference but it's very subtle. It gives it like the nice rubber look. That's it guys. Alright, there you go. Let's do the shoelaces. Well let's let that dry and then we'll um I would like to seal it. So alright so for the shoes we're gonna use warm gray by Pro Acro. This one. Here it goes. My head is in the way. I hope not. <laughs> Sorry if it is. Gotta fix a couple spots that I messed up there. That's it right there, okay? Let me see this one if I need to fix anything. I'm actually pretty happy with this one. Okay, that's pretty much it right there, guys, for these shoes. And pretty much for the figure. Alright? So let me touch up these things off camera. And when I come back, I'll hopefully I'll have this together and glued. And I'll show you. A few pictures and then we're going to move on to a new series of videos for the base um, and things like that that we're going to have to you know work on and stuff hopefully that'll go a little bit quicker than all this other stuff but um uh, we'll get there we're getting there this is a full tutorial it's to do the whole figure so with the base and everything trying to give you my ups and downs and hopefully the outcome is going to be exactly what i want uh, so we'll go go from there thank you very much okay so the figure is pretty much done guys there he is right there didn't come out great it needs to be matted down a little bit still on the pants all right so I'm gonna fix that uh, but he's pretty much done all right, I'm really happy the way he came out 
All right, and there it is. Now, if you're gonna look back at the video, this part right here is missing. The 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 outer part of this the warriors patch. Um, um, I use the um, desert sand by Vallejo for that color. All right, if you're wondering, something happened to the video. I only have like a little piece of it. I don't know what happened, so <laughs> so I'm gonna just leave it at that. But uh, desert sand, I just painted the top of it just like we did here. I use the same method up here. Okay, just so you know. All right. Um, yeah, but I'm really happy the way it's coming out. I mean everything. All right, so here's the single base for if you happen to purchase the figure alone. This is the base that it's going to come with. All right. All right, so there it is right there. Okay, and there's the base. And it's just the platform part of the the train. Where are you going to by the door? Without the doors, obviously. So, obviously, this short... I'm going to cut this video here, guys, because this has already gone way too long. More than what I usually do. All right. And this is just for this figure, and, and you know, it is it is what it is, but next up, obviously, is going to be the base, and the upgrade base, if you happen to purchase this puppy, this is the 1-6 scale, alright, I get it in there, so, I can't fit this in the camera, <laughs> alright, but, um, I'll try to leave pictures for the kit, at the end of this video or at the end of the next video at the final at the grand finale I think that's what I'm gonna do just put pictures at the grand finale right there All right but there's the base for this guys this is thing is freaking huge alright so we're gonna do another video for how to paint the base and I'm gonna do graffiti obviously you know this other stuff I was thinking about getting de uh, decals but I don't think I can get the right size that I want for this, all right? And then we're going to do the windows, too, okay? All right. So the windows do not come. The glass does not come included. But I want to show you how to how to do that very easily. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can do it a real cheap way or, you know, things like that. So I'll, I'll teach you how to do that. It should be pretty simple, okay? But there it is, guys. There's going to be the base right here, this humongo piece. All right, it's gonna get painted and then we'll glue on the pieces together and do all the weathering and whatever. All right, but <laughs> I can't even fit this in here. Man. This is huge. All right, so that's it, fellas. All right, this is it for the figure painting part of the class, the tutorial. All right, and there he is. The paints just need to be matted down a little bit, but everything else came out beautiful. I'm very happy the way it came out. All right, so hopefully you guys like it too. Just leave a comment down below. Don't forget to link and subscribe, like and all that. And, um, you know, and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, so the next video is going to be the base. So if you guys want to learn how to do that, just go ahead and follow along. Thanks a lot, guys. Peace.